Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark and welcome to my studio. Now, what have I got for you today? Well, it's part two in our watercolour painting holiday on the River Rhone in France. Part one up here somewhere if you haven't seen it, which neatly fits in with another one of my inspiration series of great artists who've inspired me. And this is probably the greatest of them all, Vincent van Gogh. Now, I know what you're saying, Paul, van Gogh didn't paint in watercolour. Well, he did, but to be fair, most of his famous pieces were done in oil. And it's a little bit of a fusion between watercolour and Van Gogh's painting style. And we'll see where it takes us. So come and join me and we'll paint this scene from our trip step by step together. But first, I've got a short film of our holiday and our journey to Provence. So our travels took us to the town of Arles, where after leaving Paris, Van Gogh arrived, hoping to set up the studio in the south of France for budding artists here at the Yellow House. And it was also here that he became more erratic and the famous cutting off his ear incident after he had a visit from fellow artist Paul Gauguin. Now some of you might recognise this location. Yep the exact spot where he sat most of the night to paint the night terrace. And here another scene at Le Jardin de Maison de Salt. And I'm pleased to see that he removed the Renault van. And then on to nearby Saint Remy, the asylum where he admitted himself. Now although his mental health would fluctuate, he managed to paint about 150 works in and around the grounds and later in the countryside. So we managed to find a nice shady spot to paint and sketch, inspired by everything around us. And here is his bedroom. And he was also given an extra room to use as his studio, where I think he painted some of his greatest works, including The Starry Night. More of that later. And you can clearly see here what arriving in Provence did to his approach and his palette. He discovered colour. So just before we start, let's get the pronunciation of his name correct. Now, our guide that we had on our excursion explained it beautifully. Now, the Brits will tend to say Van Gogh, the Americans Van Gogh, and the Dutch, obviously where he's from, will pronounce it. Well, no, I won't try it because I'll end up having to clean the lens of the camera. So to make it nice and simple, what we can do is just simply call him Vincent. Because at the end of the day, that's how he used to sign his paintings. So can we really create a Vincent in watercolour? Well, for a start, we won't get with watercolour that thick impasto effect that he loves so much. And perhaps not the brightness of the pigments you get with opaque paint like oil. But we can get the essence and feel for his work. So I started with a little research and I read this book of his letters, mostly to his brother Theo. Now, it was not only a wonderfully interesting read, but also a real insight to how he worked. So next I started by copying fairly closely this scene of a street in Auvergne. Now, I still wanted to give that sense of watercolour, but use his short dabby strokes, keeping the looseness and freshness of the original. Now here with these irises, I started by trying those thick, dark outlines that he liked to use, especially in some of his later work. Then I thought I'd try a scene from a photo that I took, the asylum, with no Vincent reference to copy. And again, it's all about those short, dabby strokes, but also trying to get some of the wet and wet feel of the watercolour. Okay, so for today's materials. Now, we have to use some French paper as we're doing a French scene. So I'm using some Arche. It's cold press, 140 pound, and it's on a block, so it doesn't need stretching, but any decent watercolor paper will do. For my paints, well, there's only one brand we can use today, and that's the Van Gogh watercolors. And the actual colors, most of these he used, Cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, sap green, viridian green, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, cadmium orange, burnt umber and dioxidine purple. 
and just three brushes from my range, a three quarter inch flat, a number 12 and a number six round. So here is the photo reference and it's one that I took of a row of houses in the grounds of the asylum. Okay, so here is the quick sketch, which as always is free to download from my website, I'll link in the description below. Now I don't want you to worry too much about perspective here because if you look at this painting of his of the yellow house, the perspective is slightly out. Now this wasn't because he didn't know his perspective, of course he did but it just helps to give that impressionistic, almost naive feel to his work. So, nice and loose and wobbly. Off we go. So starting with a good wet and wet sky made from cobalt blue and cerulean blue, nice quick confident strokes, and I'm happy to leave those little white areas of sparkle unpainted. So now it's time to let this totally dry. No, it's not time for a drink yet. Now I'm coming back on top with the same color with these short dabby brush strokes. I'm trying to get this sort of spiral type feel going that Vincent loves so much. And I'm even picking up a touch of dry brush technique, which you would also get in oil paint. Now we know that Vincent was a great colorist and he would often use complementary colors of oranges and yellows next to blues to create that stunning contrast. Now you may recognize this little doodle of his which shows this perfectly. And incidentally, he considered this one of his worst paintings. So here I'm using some cadmium orange and cadmium yellow, then dropping in some yellow ochre and burnt umber into the wet wash. So here is a little more about Dear Vincent. Now I think a lot of people don't realize that he only actually painted for 10 years, starting late in life at the age of 27 and then finishing at the age of 37 when he committed suicide. But in that 10 years, he was prolific with over 900 paintings and many more drawings and sketches, which calculates to an artwork on average every 36 hours, which makes me feel like a bit of a slacker. Right, back to the painting. Now here I'm using a mix of Viridian Green and Sap Green. Now normally I'd never use Viridian in my foliage as it can look a little artificial, but in this case, it helps to add that extra brightness to the greens. Now for the rest of my greens, now there are just far too many mixes to list them all, but I'm using my normal process of mixing cadmium yellow and cobalt blue by adding in small amounts of the Viridian Green and the Sap Green to vary the colors and to add that contrast. I'm also dropping in Wet in Wet darker values and even some Cadmium Orange to add a little bit of interest. And I'll list the colors below as I use them. But all the time I'm keeping the brush strokes loose and free flowing.
Now for the irises and some dark steam purple and I'm getting them down onto the white paper. Just quick, simple blobby shapes. Back with my greens and again I'm using a fair amount of the Viridian in the mix and for contrast here a much more yellowy green painting around the flowers. And some of them are still wet but I quite like that effect. Now I'm simply building up the coloured layers, wet on dry, getting more shape and definition. Now the one thing that came across from reading his letters is that as depressed and as manic as he could be, he was also extremely humble, sensitive and generous. A classic case of being bipolar, I would assume. He was also very conscious of wanting to please his brother Theo, who supported him financially throughout his painting career. So back to the painting, and I think all these first stage washes are done. So it's a perfect time for a short break and a glass of the extremely powerful absinthe, which Vincent, like many other artists of the time, became addicted to. So for this next section I'm using all the same colours as before and just layering on top a few details to get a little more form and shape. Now the piece of music that I wanted to use in the background for this video is that beautiful song by Don McLean Vincent. It's one of my favourite songs of all time. But sadly I'd run into all sorts of copyright issues so I couldn't use it. Now the lyrics of it are so well crafted and when he gets to that line and I could have told you, Vincent, this world was never meant for one as beautiful as you. It always sends a shiver down my spine. Okay, so now it's time to add that Vincent effect, that little bit of magic. Now we know that he collected and was greatly influenced by Japanese block prints, particularly that heavy outline which he used to use a lot in his later work. So I'm starting with this tree with a dark green shadow, then adding those curved short dabby strokes, making sure I get a nice hard dark stroke on the edge. So I'm continuing with the rest of the painting, matching with a darker version of the colour below and giving this quite a strong line along the edges, but not outlining everything, leaving lots of gaps and unpainted areas. And trying to follow the flow and direction, especially in the plants and the trees.
So the one thing that I find most sad and tragic about the whole Vincent story is that he never really knew what impact he would have on the world of art. Now he only saw one painting in his lifetime and he would have long bouts of lack of self-belief and was constantly feeling guilty about the financial support from his brother Theo. Now if only I could go back in time and let him know. Now I've had this idea of writing a novel where I do this very thing. Now the only thing that's stopping me is the lack of time and absolutely no writing ability whatsoever. But anyway, there is a chapter where I search him out painting in a lonely field in Provence. There he is full of self-doubt, painting away, and then I approach him. Sorry to trouble you, Vincent, but I need to talk to you. Who are you? I'm from the future and I want to talk to you about your paintings. <laughs> and they say I'm mad. No, no, really. You will inspire generations of artists. You'll be loved the world over. Really? Have you been drinking absinthe? No, no, trust me. You know that portrait you did of Dr. Gachet? Who? Oh, no, no, you haven't met him yet. But you will, and it'll sell for $83 million. You'll be one of the most famous artists ever. Probably only behind Leonardo da Vinci and uh, Paul Clark. Da Vinci who? Anyway, after a lot of chat, I eventually convince him and he paints on in a very happy frame of mind. And it's all good. I think he still goes on to shoot himself, but I haven't worked out the end yet. So, any publishers listening? Contact details below. In fact, there is a similar thing in an episode of Doctor Who. Now, for those of you who may not know of it, uh, Doctor Who's a British science fiction TV drama. And what they do is they go and collect him from the past, bring him to the future, and take him around the Musée d'Orsay to show him everyone admiring his work. Now, it really is quite emotional and very well done, if you can get past the actor playing Vincent having a Scottish accent. Anyway, it's on YouTube, worth a look. Just type in Doctor Who Vincent Van Gogh in the search. And a big thanks to our friend Max for pointing this out, because I'd not seen it before.
So with this uh, pillar ornament here, I hope you can see that it looks a little bit odd with the perspective being slightly out. Now it's something he would often do, seen here in the night cafe with the pool table and some of the chairs all having odd vanishing points. And this is also another great example of using complementary colours for visual effect with the striking red and green on the opposite sides of the colour wheel. So again here, lots of short dabby brush strokes. Just building up the colour here with a touch of cadmium orange and some cerulean blue. So finally adding in some lighter details with a yellow and white pastel pencil. Now I must emphasize this clearly, this is not in any way a demonstration on how Vincent painted, only a watercolor way of trying to get the essence of his work, and I hope that you'll give it a try. There we go, all done, and I've even signed it Vincent, although I know I'm not fooling anyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. What an inspiration. Now one Vincent reference I did forget to mention is this fantastic animated film, Loving Vincent. Now if you haven't seen it, it really is a treat. It's been painted by 125 different artists from all over the world, painting 65,000 individual frames, all done in the Vincent style, and it really is a visual delight. So as always, please don't forget to like if you enjoyed the video, leave a comment, I do read every single one, and I'll look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Cheers now.